And I told you earlier that I am going to announce the commission of a crime here on the show to put the justice system, criminal justice system of our country to a test. I'll do that shortly uh, whilst my guests get ready to settle down. And by the time I'm down, they would have all been seated. And then we'll get the show off the road. As you know, we are doing more on the judge, so Commissioner for Judgment Debts reports. And on that note, I'd like to start by saying uh, with a caution against unfair and groundless attacks against Justice Yawa Pau. He, as a judge, never swore an oath not to make mistakes. Our justice system anticipates judges will make mistakes. And that's why it provides avenues for review and appeal. I know he accepts your criticisms and our criticisms because of this admission of humanity and fallibility of judges. In fact, I have done two academic articles on his findings against Nana Akufuado and Justice Amadou Tanko of the Court of Appeal, who also sits in the commercial court as a high court judge. They should be published in the graphic or my jaw online <clears throat> next week. But you have to wait in the next few minutes to hear a few of the things that I have to share with you. Just a brief of the two articles that I'm referring to, and you need them because they will educate all of us and help us to, you know, discuss these issues in their perspective. Uh, the number one issue that I take is that I show that his findings have the consequences of disqualifying Nana Akufuado to contest for the job of President of Ghana, according to Article 62 and Article 94 of the Constitution of Ghana, that the fundamental principle of law, of the rule of natural justice, that a man shall not be condemned and heard, was however breached, and that a court will not or might not hesitate to strike down those findings to preempt a political mischief at denying Nanado the chance to file his nominations to contest the elections next year. It's a big deal if you think it is a joke. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> Number two, and that's the next article. I show the commission was wrong in law when it found that Justice Tanko erred in entertaining an application for default judgment because same was made in less than 14 days after Woyome amended his writ. An amended writ replaces the original. My civil procedure law lecturer, I'm sure, taught me right about that. Replaces the original, but takes the date of the original. Of, of course, the Supreme Court also recently was quite emphatic on this procedure during the election petition. There is no requirement for 14 days for anything or for the defendant to act like Justice Apau requires in his report. Again, a judge has no discretion not to adopt terms of settlement as a consent judgment if same do not, uh, does not violate law or public policy. Assuming the judge erred or foisted a consent judgment on the state, what did the state do to challenge his orders by way of review or appeal? Can a commission of inquiry purport to have review or appellate jurisdiction over the high court when its work is subject to challenge at the court of appeal? But finally, I filed an official search at the commercial court over this case, I mean the Wyoming case, this week, and the results to my inquiries, which is what should have been, in my opinion, this, which is what should have been the Commission's central focus, is a never heard of revealing scandal and criminal act for which all those who facilitated the payment ought to suffer the attendant punishment. And this is, here it is, I'll just explain it briefly. 
and then my joy online should publish it for all of you to begin to enjoy it in this country we have a law it is called the state proceedings act 1998 act 555 it requires that when a judgment debt has been obtained in a court that debt will only be paid by the state if and only if a certificate of judgment has been issued from the court. I filed my search and I asked this uh, series of questions. Please conduct a search in the above suit, and that's the Wyoming case, to answer the following questions. Whether or not a certificate of judgment was issued in compliance with Section 15 of the State Proceedings Act 1998, Act 555, for service on the defendant in respect of the amount of 17 million plus, you know the amount, as ordered by the trial judge. If yes, on what date issued, on what date served? The answer is a simple no from the courts. Number two, I ask the question whether or not the undertaking ordered by the trial judge in respect of the payment of the partial sum of 17 million was filed. The judge required that Wyoming served an undertaking and that the state should require this of, the, of Wyoming. Was that undertaking filed? The court's answer to me is a big no. Whether the order for stay of execution of payment of the balance of 34 million plus ordered by the trial judge dated the 6th of September 2010 was varied or vacated by the same judge or any other judge? The answer is an emphatic no. So how was that additional money paid? Of course, that was also paid without a certificate of judgment. Now, understand what a certificate of judgment would have inured to the benefit of the, of the state again. Whether there is any order by a pretrial judge for the payment of any other sum of money to the plaintiff, apart from the order for the payment of the 17 million conditionally? The answer is an emphatic no. And then, whether a certificate of judgment was issued for the payment of the 34 million plus? The answer is an emphatic no. Whether the payment of any sum in this suit, that's the Wyoming payment, whether the payment of any sum in this suit was made through the court for tax purposes, you ought to pay tax on judgment debt. The answer from the court is no. And finally, whether the plaintiff paid tax on the judgment debt at all, the answer is no information available on this. And I can bet my last penny that tax was not paid. I think this is the job that the judgment debt commission should have done, and it didn't do. What is going to happen to those who are supposed to police this process and to ensure that the law was followed. That's what a challenge I put to the authorities. So we we'll share this one with you, but watch out for my articles on the constitutional and procedural irregularities in the Judgment Debt Commissioner's work. Thank you very much. The show is brought to you by the candidate sponsorship of Bank of Africa, Strong as a Group, and Close as a Partner, MTN. Welcome to the new world. Sasso Spray, fresh and powerful. Star Assurance, creating smiles since 1985. And Lipton Tea, that's the number one tea brand in the world. And Cowbell Coffee, smile and have a sunshine day. Uh, three of my guests are seated. We can start whilst we wait for the uh, very final person. And uh, that is uh, from my left, Abraham Amalba. Thank you very much for joining us, Ebi. Thank you. It's been quite a while. Yes. Well, you know him. He is a member of the, the uh, NDC's legal team, and he is a private legal practitioner and teaches the law as well. Um, Yao Opong also teaches the law, and he's a private legal practitioner. Good morning, Yao. And welcome oh, once good again. Good to see you. Good to yeah. have you. Abdul <coughs> Malik Kweku Bako, Jr. He's, no, no other. Uh, Abdul Malik Kweku Bako. <laughs> he is a regular panelist and is the editor-in-chief of the new Crusading Guide newspaper. Also teaches the law by the roadside. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it so well. So, so well. Right. Um, Koku, you're welcome to the show. Thank you, ma'am. Great. And um, 
I, I like to announce at this point that uh, in the next uh, three editions, uh, episodes or so of News File, we're not going to have the benefit of the of the of the of the voodoo stuff, <laughs> of the diabolic <laughs> stuff, and the and the interception of all the documents. We are not going to have it because Abdul Malik Kwekubako will be away, but he will join us soon as he is back. You know, his annual vacation. It's time for him to take it. To a mech. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right, gentlemen. By, by who she who must be obeyed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so, uh, guys, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. And Thank you. let's start from this point because uh, we had a few things to clear up uh, last week because we finished, we ended so abruptly, and particularly <coughs> the government representative for the government and party, you know, NDC representative. Uh, missed the opportunity or didn't have n time to be able to state what their position was on the findings as regards Nanado Dankwa Akufuado. And so we take uh, Abraham Amaliba's uh, brief you know, input on that and then we move on to deal with the other judgment debts that we have before us. Yeah, Samson, if you take a critical look at the TOR, that the terms of reference of the commission, hmm you will come to one irresistible conclusion that is this a fact-finding commission. Mm. Because when you look at the wording there, to ascertain, That's to right. ascertain. Mm. So it is more or less a fact-finding commission. So witnesses who appear before it are not taken through as if they are on trial. The witnesses would have to assist the commission to establish the facts. Now, on this drill ship matter, the commission indicated that on the drill ship matter for which the commissioner says that Nanado's failure, miserable failure, to go to the London court to defend the state, where Chachichikata uh, then had ensured that there was a counterclaim on a suit that was against us by Societe General, which he said it was a strong case that he did not go to defend. And that is why we ended up paying $19 million uh, instead of $14 million as claimed to have been the amount settled on. Yes. So go on. Now, on this matter, what are the facts? Mm. Sorry, but we have just been joined by Gabi Asari Ochirudako. He's an investment and uh, political risk analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Gabi. What Thank are you. the facts? One, that when Nana Akufadu took over as Attorney General, there was a defense and counterclaim filed in the London court. Right. Two, that that defense and counterclaim was not pursued by Nanado. These are facts. Now, there are some people saying that Nana Akufado should have been invited. He actually offered himself. And I ask the question, is it in respect of these two facts? Is it in respect of the fact that there was a defense and counterclaim? Is he to come and explain that? Or is he to come and explain the inability to defend the defense and counterclaim in London? The commission's response when it was requested by Ronaldo to, as it were, appear before it, said that if it got to a point that it needed Nanado to appear before it, it would invite Nanado. That was the response, official response. Mm. I am of the view that the commission took a certain position that based on these two things, that is, whether there was a counterclaim and a defense or not, this is a matter of fact which did not need Akufado's presence. Whether there was a follow-up to defend the counterclaim and the statement of defense, this was also a matter of fact which the commission did not need an argument to come in. And so I find it difficult for people to say that he needed to be invited unless there is something else which needed clarification because I've indicated that 
what witnesses do at that commission was not to be on trial, mm. but to help the commission establish certain facts. They are actually witnesses of the commission itself. Yes, they are witnesses of the commission. Mm. So I find it a bit difficult if the issue is about these two things that I have enum enumerated. That was their defense, did he follow up to defend it? But I'm yet to hear whether there was something extra which, in my view, would have warranted the invitation of Nanado, which was not done. It isn't Nanado alone whose name was mentioned in the whole exercise of the commission's work who was not invited. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are farmers. The minister are, then and the deputy minister and the Kufo regime when Nanado was the attorney general were invited. Well, they were invited mm -hmm. simply because I'm of the view that they were the key players, prime witnesses that would help the commission to unravel uh, <coughs> the mystery surrounding the drill ship. So for me, maybe, maybe it is the conclusion of the commission's work, mm. which is maybe worrying to those who thought that Nanado should have been invited, just as you indicated, for the benefit that, for the fact that you need to uh, play by the rules of natural justice. You don't think it is important, at least, that he ought to have been heard to explain that miserable failure for which adverse findings have been made against him. Findings that, by our constitution, <laughs> actually mean that he cannot aspire to be president. I'm wondering what Nanado would have said about his failure to to defend that action in court in London. Mm -hmm. Because the, every what, what prime it, responsibility what, what of a it, lawyer... What is it that Chachichikata had to offer that was not available to the commission? The commission invited 11 witnesses. You know that... that just this case. Yes. Mm. You know Chachu was the key actor at the time which generated this whole judgment debt saga. Mm -hmm. So you will need somebody to give us the background information. That is the role he played. Then you needed those who also dealt with the drill ship. That was the deputy minister and the minister at the time. Nana Ado's role was not as if to say that he advised that the drill ship should be uh, disposed of. Mm. For him, it was his failure to do two things, which is the defense and also to, to pursue the defense. And so I'm wondering. But whilst we had filed the defense, mm -hmm. Chachichikata himself had put this defense in the court. He was still settling. What was, what was the point in the defense if he still wanted to settle? Oh, no. You are a lawyer. You know that whilst the matter is going on in court, mm. you can have an out of court settlement. And then when you <coughs> arrive at a conclusion, you can bring it to court for what is called the consent judgment. Okay. That is allowed. Thank you. Law. Thank yes. you very much. And Gabi is also joining us uh, for, for the first time on this issue. So we just, uh, you know, <coughs> meet that we hear from him briefly on this. Uh, Nana Santibide too indicated <coughs> to us last week that the team, the legal team of the, of the presidential candidates uh, might consider a suit. I think this is what we have to establish whether indeed what is purported to be the report is the report. I think, I think to me, because I'd be very surprised if, if Justice Apau decided not to go into the issue of the debt, how we incur the debt, and the liability of incurring the debt that was not approved by the board, and all that, and to jump onto a matter that, in the final analysis, had absolutely nothing to do with the settlement. Because whatever happened in court, it is not what the government of Ghana was asked to pay. It was as the result of the settlement that we paid money. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised, and I'll, I'll be very surprised, if indeed <coughs> what is out there as the report is indeed the report. So I'm, I'm a little bit careful there. Yeah. Um, I think, really, what, what is in the judgment? What is in the judgment? A judgment has been given, and eventually a settlement 
has taken place. And right. we pay based on the settlement. And we are sitting here talking about a judgment. I, I, I really don't, I don't, don't understand it. And like I said, you know, so I'll be very surprised because from what I've seen of the document that is out there as being the report, I, I, I haven't seen the commission going into the debt as to why the debt was incurred, the manner in which the debt was incurred. Oh, right. was they, told it, us, they told us about it in the report that it was because GMPC had entered into this uh, hedging yeah. or derivatives uh, yeah. contract. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's there, where we there, got. There's enough evidence, including memos, mm. that the CEO of GMPC went to contract that, 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 that debt. Without the approval of the okay. Um, no, I, I don't want us to repeat no, things no, that I'm, we have so, gone over. Kukuba no, no, sticking no, us no, through. So, so I'm, I'm making, you know, the, I'm making the document. No, I'm saying that uh -huh. the report itself right. made no judgment. Reference to that. that. Okay. And then goes on to, to, to talk about, and then there's a settlement on the gov by the government of Ghana, reducing the debt from 40 something million to, to 19 million. It, it even moves away from that and talks about a judgment that, in the final analysis, had, had absolutely no be be bearing on, on, on the case. So, so I'm a bit surprised. And like I said, you know, I'll be very surprised if Justice a power, if that is the work that he did. Well, that and is what it is, really. Well, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, so just uh, some two minutes. Oh, well, um, um, I, I think just uh, from the outset, I, I think that um, if indeed, I also think that if indeed that is a report, I'll be surprised. In fact, even... First year students. You guys stop being diplomatic about no. this. <laughs> that is the report. No, well, I'm, not, I'm not disputing <laughs> yeah, it. Okay, I'm saying ahead. that. Go I'm ahead. saying that mm. for me. You don't like it, leaked reports. That's what you are oh, doing. No, no, mm. not, not that. But it's, it, it looks so outrageous. It does? Absolutely. Yes. That I, I'm saying that even students are confused <coughs> because it defies every logic and the basic standards. When I read, I don't get that revelation. Well, the few I have seen. Yes, I, I know it's not faultless, but <laughs> obviously this points to formidable, I'm, effective ways to stop. I'm, I'm not debts. talking about the decision to say, mm. but the procedural impropriety. Okay. Look at Article 282. <laughs> Any person whose conduct is the subject of inquiry by a commission of inquiry, or who may in any way be implicated or concerned in the manner and the matter under inquiry is entitled to be represented by a lawyer. For me, that presupposes it's entitled to be afforded adequate opportunity to be heard Absolutely. by a lawyer at the inquiry and any other person who may consider it desirable that he should be represented by a lawyer shall be allowed to be so represented. So it's assumed that the person is even in yes. before the commission, Yes. but he can further be yes. a lawyer. That's and amazing. also an expert. <laughs> so for me, no adverse finding can be made against any person who has not been afforded adequate opportunity to be heard at the commission. Well, the findings have been made. Yes, yeah, so, so what I'm saying is that, you see, I expect, and I have a reasonable expectation, that the excellent lawyers at the Attorney General's Department, especially Dr. Aini, who, ha who has done a lot of things under this, will eventually advise the president to issue a white paper to set aside all adverse finding made against any person. For me, whether mm -hmm. Nanado, mm -hmm. Hanakete, the judge, I heard something about war. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, look, it has the effect of also preventing somebody like Kumbuo from, from becoming a, a parliamentarian. That's right. And that's 94. Mm -hmm. Hanakete, the same. Mm -hmm. You understand? If, if we were, I don't know whether <coughs> when we start properly, because there is everything outrageous or irrational about this that we need to just spend some okay. time and look well, at it. Again, I'm saying, once, once, again, once again, let me point out that if you want to use you know, such words as irrational, illogical, or wrong about this, you should point to specifics and not be so general well, because, because truth is if you read the report in totality, it is not, you know, Something. Now, these What's, are not my words. These, uh, these. We know we have grounds mm. under which okay. the decision. Proceed, proceed quickly and let's. Yes, we let's have grounds to, uh, under which the decision of a commission of inquiry, lower adjudicating bodies, mm. even lower courts, mm. can be set aside. And these were the words that were used by Lord Diplock, which has been adopted by even the Supreme Court. Pre
presided, in fact, the opinion of the Chief Justice, mm. the current Chief Justice, mm. in the case of TDC and Musa versus Balfour, it's been adopted here. And one of the grounds is irrational, irrationality. The other is illegality. They are I all think. here. Okay, thank and, you. And so they are not my words. Okay. I'm saying that. Uh, I'm say, you see, I, I am careful because when you are, in fact, the judges even tell us that sometimes lawyers I, I, don't I, criticize yeah. their judgment <laughs> enough. So, but I they are not you, also I available. You, I gave you two minutes. No, let, let uh, me just and, conclude uh, yeah, because yeah. of the issue okay. you raised. We are not here to criticize any individual. Okay. But I am criticizing the processes that right. a state institution, mm -hmm. like a commission, mm -hmm. and I would have done the same if a court did it, and okay. not in particular the judge himself right. or herself. Thank you very much. With, with uh, respect to Nanado. Yeah, quickly, I go to yes, Bekutu for two minutes. Nanado, mm. What was problematic is the conclusion of the commission. If the commission had ended at establishing the fact you did not defend, you did not follow up, I would be comfortable with it. Okay. But to move from there, to make, a to make that, that, that of conclusion, is where it's problematic. Financial loss. Yes, mm. but they could have just established the fact. Nanado did not pursue the matter. The matter, there was a defense and counterclaim. What, 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 what uh, Nanado's uh, a political critics or his opponents, what I hear is going to be possible going into the 2016 election is that this uh, judgment or report is going to give the opponents, you know, free uh, opportunity to, as it were, libel him without the fear of any court doing them anything because they will say we are talking from a commission's report and we are not saying you are corrupt or you have done something wrong because we are speculating yeah. or oh, you should expect yeah. that in politics you should expect you should expect that in politics even if your mother was buried and was buried in a, a, a shallow grave they will talk about it so that one, I have no problem with that, but okay. I'm talking legally. All right. That it was problematic to proceed from there. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Aram has a problem with the adverse findings in the manner it was done in respect of uh, Nako Fuadu. Uh, Koku, if you can uh, take some well, two minutes from you, that, you're speaking that, at length a, about a, this. A very smart and quick revision <laughs> of the earlier submission. So he's taking the wings. <laughs> 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 please, 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 please. It please. was right for them to conclude. Yes, I am in saying terms that, of the establishing mm. the fact. Okay. That's your, what I said. Your earlier submission appeared not to go in that direction. I'm very, very happy that you've done a revision. That's After what he saying. was educated. Yes, By and who? it has taken the sales hat off. No, no, no. But please, oh, please. there are issues to deal with still. Okay. Um, and that comes back to his earlier thing. That there's a certain point he made. And this commission, as far as I'm concerned, this is the report. This is the final report. You have bound this thing, isn't it? With a coat of arms on it. Yeah, I did it. so. Mm. It. I did so. Yes. I, I thought you trusted me a bit. <laughs> yeah? We are friends. We are. I have some little integrity <laughs> to protect. <laughs> See, the commission talks about a strong defense and counterclaim. The operative word, strong. Cabinet had decided not to pursue the case in court any longer. This testimony was given to the commission by Kandapa, and indeed it is recorded that cabinet, taking a look at the, G the state of GMPC, taking a look at this particular litigation with SG, had come to the conclusion that it was no longer the, in the interest of the country to do litigation, okay. but to opt for settlement. Now, the commission talks of strong defense. I've been asking, because I've gone through this report with all the attachments and things. I have not seen any evidence of the strong defense. What do you mean by that? The, those, the Chachuchu Qatar's testimony. Right. He made a strong, this case of strong defense. That's yes. why I said the last time that most of these things mm. happen to tilt in favor of testimonies made by And Mr. the commission Chikata. repeatedly... You know, refer to strong defense. Strong That's why. defense. That's and you say you haven't seen evidence of the strong defense. They file the defense in court. Right. Yes. That strong defense. Did the commission have the benefit of citing it? Oh, I see. I see. So as to okay. make the commission think that look, indeed we had a case. Mm. Because that's the case, the drift I get from the commission that that failure to defend was fatal to our interest. Meanwhile, I'm suggesting, and I'm not suggesting, I'm pointing out to everybody, the cabinet had actually come to the conclusion. Kandapai's testimony, he said, 
one of the uh, PowerPoint presentations, so he said cabinet at the time had decided that the court case with SG was not worth pursuing. It's a government decision. Which government was that? Uh, cabinet of MPP. Yes, administration of uh, President Kufo. So on that basis, they had opted for the settlement. Now, somebody subsequently, and no, I think that's not fair, uh, the commission, yeah, because he's, I, I respect Justice Apao, yeah. and I said it here, he's a good judge, right. yeah. and deserves to where, where he's been uh, elevated to. Yeah. I have to be very honest with you on that score. It's just this particular case I'm making a critique, however messless it might sound. On what basis do you come, do you rely on the so-called strength of the case, uh, of the defense? When you didn't assess it. How do you know you didn't assess it? Oh, it would have been stated here. <laughs> it would have been attached to. It would have attachments here. He and did, this is a critical did, thing. He didn't have space. Because the conclusion. So you are saying that he simply relied on the testimony of Chachichika. Mainly. I see. And then things are Maliba and the rest all said all over the place. <laughs> Look, sometimes it's almost the same repackaging. Mm. Nanado's so-called failure to attend was part of the NDC propaganda all along in the course of the commission's thing. On this very platform, the Deputy Interior Minister did it, Amaliba did it. I have all the reports here filed by your station. Pe -pe 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 -pe. Word for word. <laughs> it's in this okay? report. The conclusions drawn here okay. emanate from, what from things let's, you said. Let's, let's now, all not to forget no. that we have, over the period, referred to the Auditor General's report, which spoke to some of these incidents. And the commission also had the you know, right to use the Auditor General's report to repeat portions of the Auditor General's yeah, yeah, report. Yeah, but I, right. I, I, I mm. put the Auditor General's report in a different category. Okay. I mean, not comparing to what Amaliba and uh, my friend James and the rest, so even though I respect them, they don't have the same okay. standing and authority <laughs> when it comes to findings of that nature. Okay, thank Can you. Can I make the last point? Yes, go ahead. See, One minute. You remember we published, and this might sound a bit personal, my newspaper published the default judgment of June 2nd, 2001. You recall it was described as fake. Yes, I remember. But that is the same report mm. that the judgment referred to. You remember we also indicated that some of the proceeds were used to pay monthly salaries. Yes. And when Podo came and he was asked and he said he didn't know about it, I was accused of having peddled falsehood. It's also contained in this report, vindicated. <laughs> Then the last one, the sale of the dress ship. Look, the observation there again worries me. And please, just a second. I'll, this is my last shot for mm. four weeks. So this is what the commission says. Again, records before the commission showed clearly that government's own inquiry into GMPC affairs in 2001 identified the dress ship Discoverer 5111 as a profitable asset. Why then was it identified to be sold when the records, GMP when from the records, GMPC had vast assets which could be sold to defray the debt rather than choose an asset which was bringing in revenue, thus cutting off a vital source of funds. In short, why sell the hen that lays the golden eggs? Correct. This does not reflect the reality. First of all, the dreship had, if don't forget, been mortgaged by the GMPC as part of this transaction. Two, it had been arrested in Oman at a particular time this litigation was going on. These are two things that had weakened the GMP's position relative to the dreadship and the status. But more importantly, it is true that government, when it did that inquiry in early 2001, came to the conclusion that all those marine assets of GNC were virtually worthless and useless, which Kwao confirmed at the commission when he appeared, mm -hmm. except the dreadship. Now, and I and believe Kau, you are referring to the next oh, for GMPC board. Yes, mm -hmm. and I suspect it is on this basis that the commission is making this thing. No, but please, the commission said records available to it. Yeah, I have the records here, <laughs> and I will show it to you. See, GMPC's board of directors uh, handing over notes to the Mills administration, dated January 15, 2009. This is the marine assets, and they give a situation report on each. Dress ship D511. Listen, the unit was originally on lease to GMPC to do extended well testing on the South Tunnel 7 horizontal well. The production pioneer had an accident. GMPC pe pe
purchased the D511 in 1992 for 12 million. It drilled through three exploratory wells in the tunnel fields from 1992 to 1994. Between 1997 and 1999, it was rented to Transocean, I'm sorry, Transocean Drill in Mexico and generated $14.6 million. GMPC spent $13.74 million on the maintenance on the vessel. Wow. Need I continue? <laughs> <laughs> the unit was sold in July 2001 for 24 million. This was a vessel that indeed, in terms of its maintenance cost, didn't make it profitable. And indeed, it was of no use to the drilling exercises in Ghana. So the last time it did anything in Ghana was 1994. Now we had sent it out there to try and look for some small, small jobs like a trotro, you know, moving around, <laughs> moving there, there. So it makes a little money. The but the maintenance cost has become a trotro. Uh, was well, extremely so let's let's detrimental to national. The staff were not even being paid. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be paid yeah. for me. Okay. That's right.